Hi, so welcome to a video on uh, filtering commands in Linux. Basically, uh, this is a way for us to be working with a large amount of data, and we want to be working from a large amount of data uh, from the command line as much as possible. Um, so let me give you, let me show you the example I'm going to be working with. Um, this is basically an idea from um, FSOS, like we run a uh, sort of conference for open source technology at Seneca. We host it usually every year. Um, this might be an example of what you might get from a registration form uh, or the output from a web form that we have that's for registration, right? So we've got names, uh, we've got roles that they're going to be taking. We might have some volunteers, we might have some attendees, some speakers whatever. Um, you've got the amount of money that they've spent maybe over here, so attendees might be spending $50 to get in. Um, volunteers get in for free. And then past that we have uh, maybe dietary requirements. We may have some vegetarians, vegans, and uh, t-shirt sizes. Let's assume that everyone's getting a t-shirt. Okay? So what I'm going to try to do is run through a bunch of scenarios where we are taking this output and uh, working with it, like maybe um, massaging it a little bit, trying to answer questions based on uh, what we see here, okay? So like, um, so maybe for example, the first thing that we want to know is how many people have registered or how many registrations that we have. Now you'll notice that some of these uh, records are repeated, so maybe somebody forgot that they had already registered or whatever. Also people might be both um, like a speaker and an attendee, they decided to pay the full price just to, you know, like support. Or they might be a volunteer and a speaker or, you know, something like that. So we're going to be handling that maybe later on in the demo. Um, for now, the first thing that I'm going to do is maybe show, like, uh, let's just count the number of lines that we have in this file. Every line is going to be one registration, so let's maybe find out how many registrations we've got. So the tool that we've got is called WC, which stands for word count, and what that is going to do is spit out a number of lines, the number of words, and number of characters, I believe. Now let's be a little bit more specific and let's just look at lines. So let's do WC with an option dash L. The dash L is going to just count lines. Okay, and we see that I've got 18 lines in this record so far. And let's assume that we could end up with like hundreds of people on this list eventually. Okay, WC. The next thing I'm going to talk about is a command called grep. So let's say that I want to see who's a vegetarian in our list. Okay, so we're going to be searching for that uh, string vegetarian. I'm going to be looking. It's kind of like how you start up your browser and you hit control F and you can look for, you know, various keywords, right? So grep is going to allow us to do a keyword search and I'm just going to type in vegetarian over here. I'm going to put it in quotes just to be safe. This is going to be consistent with how we use this tool later on in the course. And then the next thing I'm going to use is just uh, the file name again. Okay, so that's grep string file. And you can see you get back a little bit of a list over here. I see that I've got sort of uh, three vegetarians that I got to worry about. So now the next thing that I'm going to do with this, I don't necessarily need to see these people's names. What I really want to be doing is counting them, right? I want to be able to go to the caters and say, yes, we're going to have like 24 vegetarians, 30 vegans, um, 200 people with no restrictions, and I don't know, gluten-free, maybe there's a couple gluten-free people. I don't know, we want to be inclusive, right? So wouldn't it be great if we could connect the output, this output that we see here, to the input of the word count command? right? So basically what I want to do is chain some of these commands together and um, work work like that. So this is how piping sort of comes into our world. Um, what I'm going to do over here is maybe I'll shrink this a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read. So I'm gonna take this grep vegetarian thing 
and I know it's going to spit out three lines and what I want to do is count those lines okay so our output should just be a number I can see right now that the number is going to be three but if we're working with thousands of records right we can't easily count it so the symbol to do this is um, the vertical bar and that's called a pipe so what we're basically doing is taking the standard output of the grep command and we are connecting that to the standard input of the word count commands okay and then finally word count standard output is just going to come back to our display the same as it has been this whole time okay? so right now I can see that I've got three vegetarians and I can do this and I can repeat it for the vegans regular gluten-free all that other stuff okay so for now maybe what I'll do is I'm going to leave piping I'm gonna leave piping for now and we're gonna come back to it you're gonna see more examples of pipes as we go um, the next thing that I gotta worry about is maybe printing up some name tags okay uh, so let's assume that I've got like a nice um, template or something like that something pretty that I can work with and what that is going to be accepting is a nice CSV file comma separated whatever um, so basically we're gonna have different fields separated with commas and we're going to use that to print up a bunch of name tags okay on our name tags uh, names are important um, it might also be nice to have the role to know if somebody's a speaker or not so you can go up and like compliment them on their on their great workshop or whatever um, but we don't necessarily want the t-shirt size on that because people might be sensitive about like you know their t-shirt size or something like that but it's, it's really not necessary to have that there so let me introduce to you the cut command and what cut is going to do is we can specify fields that we want printed and by field I mean basically columns if you're thinking like a spreadsheet like putting this into a Microsoft Excel or you know LibreOffice uh, calc or whatever you use like to use um, I'm basically looking at columns so I only, only want to see the columns that have names in them like this and the roles in them so I'm only interested in the first the second and the third columns okay that's the last time I'm gonna use the word columns for the rest of the time I'm gonna use the word field at least for the cut command okay I have three fields they are separated with commas you'll notice already um, so that's pretty handy for us but we're gonna have to define that in our cut command so basically let's start putting this together so the fields I'm interested in are one to three and the del delimiter the thing that separates one field from the next is gonna be a comma okay so I'll just I won't use key I'm gonna use D for delimiter here and I'll just put it in single quotes just because that's well, good practice but it's not strictly necessary okay so I'm gonna run that last thing that you'll notice file name always okay and this is basically how the cut command works now also you'll notice um, this isn't very handy for us just to be spitting it out on the screen so what I really want to be doing is putting this into a new file called name tags dot CSV or something like that um, or maybe just name tags I'll call it name tags for now okay so I can do that when I cat name tags I should see all of my stuff right there okay moving on we now have a file full of name tag names that's all done but I've noticed that um, my stuff over here my names are not in any order whatsoever it's maybe just the chronological order I was the first one to fill out the web form and then Vincent came in and he decided that he wanted to speak on a certain topic or something like that and maybe this is who knows anyway let's um use this to start talking about sort um, sort well sort sorts that's basically it the default behavior for sort is that you give it the file that you want sorted it's going to take each of these lines it's going to sort it 
by default alphabetically from the beginning of the line to the end of the line. So you can see that this is now created an alphabetical list of people. Now I can take this and let me show you one thing that I can use with cat. So cat will accept options as well. And if I do cat n f sauce example, you can see what it does is the dash n is going to add line numbers. When I just run this by itself, just cat n f sauce example, um, I'm getting the unordered output of this but I'm adding line line numbers to it. Uh, wouldn't it be handy to take this list, sort it alphabetically and then give it numbers. So then I can use these numbers to maybe, uh, oh I don't know, like use it as a primary key for a database and, or email list or something, you know. And it's just maybe a better way to look at stuff. So instead of using cat like this what I'm maybe going to do is use my sort example. The output, the sorted output of my data, I am going to pipe into cat. And so now cat is not looking at the FSOS file. Cat is taking the output of my sort command and it's going to add line numbers to that. And then we're just going to output it to our screen. Okay? Here's another pipe example. And so you can see that this has worked out pretty well. Um, I can also see that there are a lot of repetitions, right? Like Hernandez Mark, I don't know what happened there, but like um, maybe he forgot that he had already registered. Who knows? Um, so we're going to have to come and clean this up later on. Okay. So sort has a lot more options. We don't have to go necessarily by like alphabetical order. We can. Um, do different things. We can do a number um, sort. We can go but like you know lowest value to highest value, um, and we can also define what field we're working with. So there's that word again, field. Um, unfortunately, when we work with sort, um, the way that we specify options is completely different. So let me show you how that looks. Um, let's start with a list of people who have contributed the most versus the people who have contributed the least. Maybe what we want to do is have like a uh, priority line where, you know, if like you've contributed $250, um, you get to go to the front of the line or you get like another alternate line so you don't have to sit there waiting in line at 9 o'clock in the morning for, you know, like 45 minutes just to get your badge and stuff, right? I don't know. Um, this might just be useful in terms of knowing how much um, money we've made off of registration so far. Um, but you know all that math stuff is something that you'll be learning on later on in the course. So for now all I'm going to do is be sorting numerically and I'm interested in this field over here. Um, the way that we say that with sort is not field but key. Why do we say key here and field in the cut command? Um, I'll tell you right now that sort and cut are used together quite a bit to do these sort of like um, small jobs. Um, I don't know, ask the programmers. I, I really can't tell you. It's uh, kind of inconvenient. And for the delimiter we don't use the D here, we have to use T. Again, don't don't complain to me. I, I didn't make the rules, okay? I didn't write the sort command so I can't tell you why we chose these things. Um, let's run this and see what we get. So if you'll notice, um, at the very top here we have all the volunteers and stuff, the people who spent zero dollars, then we have the people who are regular attendees that spent fifty dollars, and then at the bottom we've got the people who contributed two hundred and fifty dollars. So let's go over here, and what I can do is add another option, R. So the R is going to reverse this, and so now I see the two hundred and fifty dollar uh, gold members at the very top. We can do it like this. You can do it like this. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Um, these options over here, it kind of doesn't matter which order you're putting them in. Okay. 
And one more interesting um, use of the sort command uh, that you might discover if you go reading through the man pages. Um, we can actually use this to uh, sort randomly. So let's assume that on the very last night uh, we might have some sort of raffle. And um, what we could do is, you know, print everyone's name and put it in a big barrel and then, you know, rotate the barrel and then pull something out. Um, but let's assume that we don't want to do that because maybe we want to save paper. I don't know. Um, so sort dash uppercase R F sauce example is going to return to us a random a random order for all of these names. You can see that the first result each time is a little bit different. So each time I run this, um, I shuffle things around and then I get a new list order. Um, we don't need to get the entire list. All we need to get is maybe one name. So what I can do is take this I'm going to pipe the output of this and I'm going to say that I'm only interested in the first result, the first line printed. Hopefully that helps you recall uh, the head command which we've used for different things. So I'm going to use head dash one. The dash one specifies that I'm only inter interested in one line. And when I run this, I get back Mark Hernandez. Congratulations, Mark. Come up and receive your prize. Okay, so we've gone through a bunch of different examples showing you cut and sort and uh, word count and things like that. Um, I think now it's about time for us to start um, cleaning up our data. Um, so when you notice over here, we have a lot of sort of repetition. Uh, we've got a Mark Hernandez, Mark Hernandez, blah, blah, blah. So this is from a web form, you know, like uh, users will find different ways of typing their own name in and who knows why. Um, trust me, it definitely happens. It definitely looks like this a lot of times. So let's do some things to just sort of clean up our data. Um, there's probably a lot of different ways to approach this problem, but I'm going to show you one. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort FSOS example. And you'll see that this just returns alphabetical order, right? And you can see here's the situation where Mark put his name twice with exactly the same data each time. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is take this and I'm going to pipe it into unique. And what this will do is if you have two lines consecutively that are exactly the same, it's going to remove the second line. Okay, so we're only looking at unique results. Let me clear the screen and do that again so you can see. So the first run through of this tool uh, is not very successful. We did get rid of the second Mark Hernandez uh, line over here, but we still have Amy Patel and stuff like this, right? Vincent DeBoer. So the problem is that here is one line where Vincent DeBoer is an attendee. In the second line, he's a speaker. So think what one thing that we're going to do, if we just want to get a list of actual humans who are coming to this thing, um, not necessarily, you know, registrations, because we see we, a lot of, we have a lot of repeats, uh, we want to actually get a number of people who are going to physically be there, right? So let's take this, and I'm going to take out most of the information here, and I'm just going to look at names. So it's going to be first name, last name. Let's assume that uh, there's nobody here attending who has exactly the same name. Uh, so this should, this should work for us, at least in this example here. So I am interested, again, in the first and second fields only. The delimiter is a comma. And after I do this, I'm going to send it into unique. Um, let's take a look at that without unique first. Um, I'll show that to you now. So, looking much better. Now let's take this and I'm going to add unique to the end of the chain here. And you can see that we have been a little bit successful in getting out repeats. Except not really. Uh, the second problem that we have is these capitalizations, right? So, 
we were able to get rid of the two Hernandez marks over here. Now we have to deal with case, okay? There's a couple ways that you can do this, but um, I want to introduce to you the TR command. So the way the TR command works is um, basically we can um, convert things into other things. And um, this is one way of doing it. So this is what we're starting with. This is what we want to replace. And this is what we want, what we want to replace it with. You can see that it's smart enough to figure out that like, if I've got a lowercase a, that I want to replace it with the uppercase a. Um, if you give something that's malformed here, uh, it will complain, like something like that won't work. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, if I try to use this tool just like this, F sauce example, just like this, um, TR doesn't accept it. So we're not able to use TR the same way that we use cut and sort with like, you know, starting with a file name. So there's a couple ways around that. One thing that we could do is do this interesting redirection where this isn't redirection of standard output into a file. This is redirection of a, a file into the standard input of TR. Okay, You're going to see this maybe a couple of times as you go through this course. Um, it's not as commonly used as the other redirections that you've seen before. So I wouldn't worry about it, but as you can see, this is how the TR command works. Like everything that was lowercase is now uppercase. And you know, yeah, here's an example. If I take out the zero over here, if I do something malformed, um, it's going to complain. So it probably won't try to get you in, in any kind of mess. Here's the other way that we can work with this. I can use cat f sauce example and then pipe this into the tr command just like this. Okay, so once again, tr is accepting um, data into its standard input and then working with that, and the output is going to our display just like this. So let's use this um, with our f sauce example. So, what I'm going to do, let me clear this. Just for this, uh, what I'm going to do is convert everything into uppercase letters just so it's consistent, okay? Um, so let me do tr a to z and a to z, okay? And maybe before I move any farther, we'll just take a look at what that looks like, okay? Okay, and looks like I've forgotten something. So tr to z to a to z. Uh, I'm not sure why. Oh, there we go. I just forgot it to enter. Okay, so now I've got everything in capitals. Um, the small differences in capitalization have now disappeared. And now what I can do is pipe this into unique as well. And finally, we're getting back a list of names and these are the individuals coming to our conference hopefully and if I run this then you can see that um, I've got fewer people who are actually showing up versus uh, registrants like this was 18 and now we're down to 14 okay so this is a very very quick sort of whirlwind tour into some of the filter commands that we use in Linux. Um, why would we ever want to do this? Why can't we just put this into Excel and work with it? Well, when we're working with command line tools like this, um, you can basically automate things, okay? So instead of opening up your spreadsheet, typing in you know, equals count something something, you know, with a range and doing this each time and opening it up, we can do this in different contexts. I can take each of these little chains of things, I can put those into scripts, and I can have them run every time that some change has happened um, on the files that are in question. Um, so I can automate it, I can run it on a schedule, I can run it remotely, I can like SSH into a different machine and just like run stuff and get the results back very, very quickly. 
Um, so it has a lot of advantages, um, which I think you'll begin to perceive as you are using these tools and getting more comfortable with them. Okay, um, as always, go to Matrix and you will be able to download the example data that I've used or, you know, create your own or whatever you feel like. But I recommend practicing and getting comfortable with this before the midterm.